Camera on? I think we're rolling. Let's go. Uh, right here in this Husky box is basically my toolbox for my pop-up camper. Now, in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through kind of the tools that I bring for camping. Now, some of this is very specific to our uh, cross-country 10-day Colorado boondocking in the mountain. This thing is a Husky uh, box from Home Depot. I changed over from my Plano boxes to this Husky box last year. What I love about it the most is four of these fit in between my 2017 wheel well. And you can stack two of them on top of each other and it fits below your bed cover, which is awesome. It's clear, you can see, if you wanna take the lid off, just like that, comes off and I absolutely love it. If you watched the last video, I ended the video with this um, wire cable as a spare for the pop-up camper. That I bought for this trip. I don't know if I would take that or buy that um, for going an hour away to a uh, state park. That's coming with us to Colorado. Uh, the other thing that I actually added, and I don't know if I'll need this in Colorado, is some um, ant killer. Now, instead of bringing the whole bag, I just emptied out a water jug and threw some in there. I'm gonna sprinkle this around the wheel wells, the tongue jack, and the scissor jack in case we're camping somewhere where ants are an issue. Next is some Skidmore wax. I've only used it, well, once I think it looked like, but um, when it rained one time heavily, uh, I used this in the corners when I got home, and you basically apply a thin amount, let it dry for, I think, six to 12 hours, and then it, your seams become waterproof. So that's in the toolbox. I have a bunch of different tools. I got some electrical tools. I've got some needle nose, some wire cutters. These are actually bringing so I can cut the cable if I have to. All the stuff hanging in the ceiling is from this thing. I only bring this because if one breaks, I literally want to replace the D-ring because I love them so much. And then this is a wire crimper just in case some electrical stuff goes sideways. Moving on to some specific things that I'm bringing for Colorado. I have a spare regulator. Now we are going up to 10,000 feet. I'm bringing my wife, my two little kids. I need the propane regulator to work because I need the heater to work. If I was going with me and my buddies and we were going elk hunting, it is what it is. You're going to freeze one night, who cares? And I got spare hoses in case one of them leaks or cracks. Dealing with propane while you're sleeping, speaking of that, uh, this is from our tent camping days and it's just a, safe, a good safety practice. We carry a spare uh, carbon monoxide sensor alarm and we just put on top of the pantry up top in case the one that's hardwired in the camper goes out. Batteries are good, so there you go. I have a spare anodoid for the hot water heater. I don't know why I really carry this, but it's in the pop-up camper toolbox. Um, speaking of the heater, while we're on the subject, I actually experienced this a couple years ago. My heater quit working, it just went out. Um, I actually hired an RV tech because I couldn't figure it out. He couldn't figure it out. He ran all tests and everything checked out and it was fine. I was like, I'm gonna replace the thermostat and see if that's it. $16 thermostat could have saved me $400 RV tech fee. So I bought a spare $16 thermostat to take to Colorado so my heater works because it's happened to me. Um, as far as wrenches, I bought a pair of, what is it, metric and SAE or whatever, European, USA, however you wanna say it. Now what's cool about these is, they're the uh, pivoting wrenches, but they're also the socket ones. So it's kind of like, does a little bit of everything and you only have to carry a few wrenches just for shits and giggles. I do bring, this comes out of my shop. I don't keep this in here. I am gonna bring a set of so small sockets just because it fits and why not? Yeah, I actually bought one thinking I could save some money and I was literally using on the truck to install um, some stuff to the batteries and I needed the other one. So I was like, well crap, now I gotta go order it. So I have both. PEX. We have PEX in the pop-up camper. I have a PEX kit with some spare uh, connectors, both 90 and straight. In case something were to crack, to break, and you need to replace a PEX line, that's a good thing to have in your kit. I also have some spare PEX um, tubing. Now, I don't have red and blue, I just have blue because if something breaks, who gives a shit? what color it is. Speaking of water, I have a spare pump. Now I didn't go out and buy this for this trip. I might have, who knows. But a couple years ago, my pump was acting up. Like it sounded like it was going out or breaking and uh, wasn't really 
working properly, so I ordered a new one. As soon as it came in, the next trip, the pump went to working normally, and it's been working ever since for two years. Speaking about the truck, I have a kit to repair the tires. So I have a plug kit. I bought this for Colorado. Really, again, you should probably have this in your car anyways, but I bought this for Colorado because we're gonna be out in the middle of nowhere and AAA probably won't go that far, nor does our cell phone service work. I have a spare propane regulator and um, tubing for my outdoor stove. I have some zip ties, literally zip ties and duct tape. You can MacGyver anything. And the last thing I have in here is an assortment box of different things, anywhere from screws, bolts, uh, some, some water electrical stuff, some D-rings, like I said. I have a whole separate thing just for electrical. I have some spare wire in here. I have some uh, terminal connectors, some butt connectors, anything around um, fixing something on the camper that's a small part. I have it in these little boxes. Now in this bag right here, I have, um, it's basically like a vinyl repair kit. So if you have a leak or you put a gash or a knife through it, it's basically like a flex seal tape to get you by when it's raining and you're out in the wilderness. I've been building this out for, I don't know, probably the last year, getting ready for this trip. Some of the stuff I would recommend for you to carry in your weekend trips that you take with your family to your local state parks, I think you'll benefit from it. Some of this stuff is, I think, crucial or beneficial for cross-country trips where you're driving 10 plus hours. Now, can we get this back in the box and play Tetris? I think we can. Oh, it didn't fit. Come on, get in there. Fits like a glove, like I've done this before. Now, some other tools that I'm bringing that don't fit in the toolbox. I always bring a 20 volt uh, impact drill, and this is what I use for the scissor jacks on the uh, pop-up camper. I'm also bringing a, just a drill to have and some drill bits just in case I need to do anything with a drill bit. I'm also bringing a spare a 20 volt max battery by DeWalt and the charger. And the main reason behind that is I have a 20 volt max uh, chainsaw and hopefully we can cut some deadfall for some firewood. Now the last thing that I'm bringing, and this is kind of a uh, luxury or a who knows what's gonna happen, but supposedly the ground up there is like full of just rocks. The reason behind that is I wanna be able to drill down for my awning. I like putting a lag bolt in the awning feet coming off of the pop-up camper because of the trade winds. My buddy's gone up there and he says every day around noon, the winds come down and it kind of blows pretty hard. I want the awning to go out because it protects my chuck box and I like to have the awning out just for the shade in general. I've been in 30 plus mile an hour winds and the awning's held up great, but if I can't get a lag bolt in the ground, um, that awning's gonna break off. All right, so last year, I bought a electric lithium. Um, this is basically a jumper starter for your truck. Now you should probably have this regardless of camping. Like I've said a couple other things tonight. Again, we're gonna be out in the middle of nowhere. If my battery dies, I wanna be able to jump it to get on the road or at least keep it running. I've actually had to use it once or twice already. This thing has been charged up last night, so we're ready to go. That stays in the console of the F-150. The other thing that I bought for this trip um, I have a little uh, pump right now that I use for the airbags on the truck. The problem with that is it's, it's a 110 volt um, pump, but it's only like 0.4 uh, CFMs. It doesn't put out a whole lot of air and it takes forever to blow up your tires. So I went ahead and pulled the trigger on a Vi Air air pump and we we're gonna air down our, our tires while we go up the forest road to prevent any kind of punctures of our tires. I hardwired in an Anderson plug underneath the hood of the F-150. So instead of using the alligator clips on the positive and negative, open up the hood, plug in that Anderson clip, and we're off to the races to air down or fill up our uh, tires on both the pop-up camper and the truck. The other thing that I bring that stays in the camper, stays in my electrical bay, is a bunch of fuses. If you've been following me for a while, you know I've got a pretty intensive electrical system on my pop-up. I have some a &L fuses, I have some uh, inline fuses, I have some blade fuses. Next topic is the cassette. Black water, slinky poopy, whatever you wanna call it. Um, the cool thing about a cassette and the bad thing about a cassette is it's a cassette. We can take it out, gotta dump it, it's not very big. But going up into the National Forest, 
I think it's gonna be beneficial because all we gotta do is find a vault toilet and there's one somewhat close to our camp that we're gonna, that we're gonna take the vault toilet to dump out probably twice over a course of eight days while we're up there. So I am bringing spare Aquamax Thetford. This is the concentrate. I am bringing a, a empty Simply Orange. I just pour it in there, put some water in there and mix it up. The other thing I did is I went ahead and bought one of these five gallon uh, bags and I'm gonna fill this up with water and this is gonna be used for the cassette to clean it out. My OCD kicks in. Yeah, I could dump it, but it's just gross. Let me put some water in there, shake it in a couple times, dump it some more. So I'll put five gallons to that, clean it out. That is coming with us. This whole kit normally doesn't come with this. I usually fill this up at home and it gets this through the three day camping trip on our normal trips. The next topic is drinking water. So we are boondocking, dry camping. We're bringing in all our own resources. I've never had to do this, but um, we are gonna run out of water. And so I went ahead and got two of, of these for drinking water. Normally on our three, four day camping trips, I bring a case of water from Costco. That's what we drink. There's uh, trash bins locally to our camps. We throw out all the trash on the way out. No big deal. Since we have to haul in our own stuff and haul out our own trash, I'm not doing plastic water bottles. Plus I would need like four cases for seven days. So we're bringing 12 gallons of water that will probably last us 70% of the time. And then on the camper, I've got 20 gallons that comes with the uh, camper. I've got my jerry cans up front, which is 10 gallons total. So I have 30 gallons for washing dishes, uh, taking showers, doing all that kind of stuff. Outside on my chuck box, I bring this little guy with water, and this is what I actually use to um, kind of wash dishes outside. Um, and that will last all week. Once we run out of drinking water and we run out of uh, shower water, cause we will, um, there's four of us and I'm gonna take showers. I've got a system to source my own water from the river or the lake. And that system is right here in this Husky bin. Let me walk you through kind of the setup or synopsis of how this thing works. I am gonna do a full video of me extracting water for our camp while we're out there in Colorado. So if you haven't already subscribed because that video is coming out in a few weeks, but let me break this down how this works. So you have a couple hoses, you've got a pump, you've got some filters and the jackery. So this is how the system works. You have the hose with a screen filter that goes in the lake or the river. From that hose, you have a simple 12 volt pump. I put a cigarette lighter on that that plugs into the jackery that provides power. After the 12 volt pump, we have an inline RV five micron filter. And then we have a three stage filter that breaks down the process to I don't even know what this one's called, but basically it gets rid of E. coli and all that stuff. It makes it drinkable water. I will fill up the jerry cans or the drinking water cans and hike however far it is, a couple hundred yards up to camp for drinking water and to fill up so I can take a warm shower before I go to bed. Again, it's like playing Tetris. Just like that, there's your water filtration system. The last things on my list for this camping trip, some walkie talkies, bear spray, a Garmin inReach, and the adult walkie talkies, which are the Rocky talkies. Uh, bear spray. Um, we're going in Southern Colorado. Yes, there's bears. My buddy's gone up there four years in a row and has never seen a bear. And we're literally camping in the same general area. My wife's gonna carry this around. I actually need to teach her how to use it. You never know. It's better to have it safe than sorry. My mother-in-law got the kids these inexpensive walkie talkies. There's a set of four of them. The other two are already in their bags for the car ride. But it got me to thinking, since we don't have cell phone service up there in the mountains, if I'm fishing and I'm a mile away and something's going on at camp, um, I wanna be able to communicate with my family. So I went ahead and pulled the trigger on the Rocky Talkies. After doing a bunch of research, um, these are probably the best ones to get. Um, they are on the more expensive side. I think they're like $110 a walkie talkie. They're the strongest you can get over the counter without having a FDA or some kind of license. They're only at two watts. Now to communicate back at home, saying that we're safe, blah, 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 or we need to get a hold of emergency systems to come rescue us for whatever reason, hopefully that never happens. I bought a Garmin inReach messenger. Um, I can text with this. I can click the SOS for emergencies if one of us is severely injured and we need to be uh, helicoptered out of there for the peace of mind and an insurance policy, I went ahead and bought that. What else am I missing? 
I feel like I bought so much stuff and I'm probably not gonna use any of it. So in the coming weeks, I will be sharing some content from Southern Colorado where we are going to be doing some remote camping up into the reservoir, also along the river. I'm gonna be doing some fly fishing. We're gonna go on some family hikings and just exploring the Southern Colorado area, everything that it has to offer and we're excited. So if you haven't already, subscribe and thanks for watching. As always, we'll catch you guys in the next video.